Hello, my name is Rachel, and I love playing with makeup. And I thought we should do another chatty get ready with me. So, <laughs> today's story, I've actually debated how best to tell it and whether or not I even should tell it. And I know in my, my other chatty get ready with me where I was telling an ex-boyfriend story, I, I talked about how I recently went on this trip to Philadelphia with some close friends, and these are people who have known me pretty much my entire adult life. And uh, talking with them, they, they made me come to realize and accept, I need to accept that I am still suffering somewhat from some emotional trauma from a previous relationship. And it has been several years since this relationship has ended. Uh, those of you who've been with me for a while know that I started my YouTube channel because I had just gone through a incredibly painful betrayal and breakup. And I started the channel as a way to distract myself from all that and, you know, try to learn new skills and just have something else to focus on. So, that is actually, <laughs> I guess, the story that, that I'm, I'm going to tell. Because like I said, talking with my friends, we talked about how since then, like if I think a guy is hitting on me, I have a complete panic attack. Like even if it's just in messages online, I'll like just, I'll get sick to my stomach, you know, I'll, my heart will start racing, I get, I'll get upset, and half the time, if it's someone I don't know well, I'll block them, and if it's someone that I do know well, I'll tell them that I'm very uncomfortable <laughs> and to please stop. <laughs> and, you know, it's been, it's been over two years, and I only just finally went on my first sort of date, like, just over a month ago, and it's with a, it was with an old friend who I've had a crush on for a long time, so I thought it would be safe. And I did warn him ahead of time that I might not be able to handle the whole, you know, <laughs> starting to date thing well. And, and yep, uh, I did, I did have a panic attack <laughs> of sorts, small one, but still, I, I did freak out just a little bit. And I'm, I'm just, I'm just not ready, just not ready to to date again yet I'm just not there so I had to uh, like and when I said when I was talking to my friends about all this they're like well that's that's kind of the signs of some emotional trauma that you have there and you really need to work on that so I'm hoping that by you know telling the story <laughs> maybe I can I can work on that and I guess for today's makeup <laughs> a little off subject here I am going to be using these two palettes that I did get in boxy charms and I haven't tried yet this Huda Ruby Obsessions palette and this Maven Beauty Cosmic Drip palette. And I'm going to um, actually swatch this one real quick. And this is what those colors look like, if I can get them out of the glare. These are, they're very sheer and shimmery, so these are probably more like top coats. And the one I was thinking about using today is here at the, the top. It's the one that has sort of a red shift to it. And I'm going to swatch just a couple of these. There we go. And those are all super pretty. I have several of uh, the palettes and the other color stories, and I really do like these palettes. So I guess back to the topic at hand. <laughs> Now there is a, a twist to this story, so there is a, a like sort of, for me at least, it was an oh my god I can't believe this is happening moment. <laughs> and if you don't want to hear uh, my ramblings about the relationship, um, I'm going to put a timestamp somewhere so you can just skip ahead to the twist. <laughs> just get to the, 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 for me, what was kind of like a whoa, <laughs> I can't believe this is real life moment. <laughs> and I completely understand if you don't want to hear me. You know, rambling about the relationship. And I guess I should have some disclaimers here as well. Um, obviously, I'm not going to use names, but if you know me, you'll probably know who I'm talking about. So I request that also do not mention names anywhere in the comments if you do happen to know who I'm talking about. No names, please. <laughs> and I also want you to keep in mind that I'm, I'm still coming from a place of a little bit of bitterness and hurt. So I guess when I am talking about the relationship, keep that in mind. And I don't want to, like, I, I definitely don't want to demonize this person. I do not think that he is a bad person. Uh, I, I do believe that he treated me poorly, but I still think that he is a, can be a good person and a good friend. Uh, just <laughs> things didn't go that way for us. <laughs> so I guess, 
I guess I need to start my makeup and start the story. Oh, and I guess I'm not exactly sure how to give it a trigger warning, but I will be talking, of course, about, like I said, I still suffer from some emotional trauma. There's like lies and betrayal and and some true crime thrown in there <laughs> i bet that got your interest <laughs> but you know so just i guess just be forewarned <laughs> these types of stories have those types of elements so ah. so where to begin So I was actually friends with this person for a couple of years before we started dating. We were online friends. We'd only met in person, I think, one time previous to us, you know, basically starting, hooking up and starting dating. But we had been online friends for a couple of years. And and in those couple of years, you know, he was, he would always give me that stuff about, you know, how he's such a great boyfriend and uh, how he would never treat me the way that the previous boyfriend did, the one who broke into my house, <laughs> which which you can see that story. I'll put that story up in the cards here if you want to hear the broke into my house story. <laughs> but um, you know, he would never he would never treat me that way, and you know, he he's this amazing boyfriend who always gets taken advantage of. So I, I listened to that for two years, and he'd asked me out a couple times, and I'd always refused. I just there was just I don't know. There were a lot of red flags and I should have paid attention to the red flags uh, but I just I guess in the end I just made excuses for them and I finally agreed and we went we moved up probably too fast we moved pretty fast and it was probably too fast we'd only been dating for six months when we decided that we were going to buy a house together although in retrospect we didn't buy a house together I sold the condo that I had lived in for 15 years and I bought a house <laughs> but let this person have way too much say in the you know the decision making process <laughs> because you know he contributed nothing towards the down payment nothing towards all of the repairs that had to be done when we moved in nothing towards the appliances and and things like that that we needed he was basically you know in retrospect he was basically just a tenant uh, and, and he his friend he he did pay his rent on top well he did pay his rent <laughs> but rarely on time <laughs> and a lot of the times it wasn't in full he'd have to pay it in a couple different installments so you know all that of course is red flags but by then those red flags are too late because I'm already living with the person <laughs> and I think we'd only been living together for a year the first time I caught him having uh, inappropriate phone conversations with other women <sighs> and I made excuses to myself that he just, you know, he just, actually that first time when I confronted him, he blamed me because I had just started a new job uh, on an opposite shift of his because he was also night shift. And eventually I was going to get to night shift, but my new job started me on day shift. And, and, you know, so we were on opposite schedules and he was saying that I wasn't home enough and he wasn't getting enough attention. And I let myself believe that BS. <laughs> and just you know brushed it under the rug and then made the excuse when he continued to do such things that he just needed the extra ego stroking so basically from about a year into our relationship we were together for like three and a half years but from about a year into our relationship maybe a year and a half into our relationship onward he had been he basically had been looking for his next relationship and you know if you're constantly looking for that new connection eventually you'll find it and eventually he did find it and he left me and you know your your middle-aged female's worst nightmare he left me for someone who was younger thinner arguably prettier and to be fair I had gained a lot of weight in the relationship I kind I guess I had let myself go a bit and I've lost a lot of that weight since the relationship ended but I still haven't lost all of it <laughs> so I mean I don't know if that's uh, I, I'm not sure if that was part of it but I kind of feel like it might have been I also feel like another part of it was you know when you're living with someone and you think you're building a future with them <laughs> you can't be you know, constantly, 
praising everything they do and stroking their ego. You have to be realistic at some points. And, and I think he, I wasn't necessarily, maybe I didn't word my criticisms in the best way. And I think he resented me for a lot of that as well. <laughs> now there's, there's also the part where, <sighs> to, I mean, I'm a fool and I lent him a lot of money. And, and a large chunk of that money, not all of it, but a large chunk of that money was f for a car loan because he had bad credit and the best interest rate he could get was like a 20%. And, you know, I thought we were building a future together, so I didn't want him to have to pay 20% interest on a car loan. So I loaned him the, the money for that, you know, um, not a new car, obviously, a used car. And, and that was pretty early on in the relationship and he never made payments on that like promised. So by the time that he left, he still owed the majority of that money. And what he did was he, he did turn the car over to me, but you know, at that point, the car had depreciated significantly, plus the transmission was beginning to go. So I really, I, I got almost no money <laughs> back out of that. Plus there was some other money that he had borrowed from me that, you know, I just had to write off. He, he was never going to, to pay me back. So I lost a lot of money. So there was a lot of lying. Those last six months, he was showing incredibly obvious signs of cheating. You know, the sort of thing where half the time, if I was near him and he was looking at his phone, it wouldn't matter if someone texted him. But then the, every now and then, there would be a certain person that texted him that he would, like, practically throw the phone across the room to make sure I avoided seeing whatever that was. So, you know, just, just things like that. Very obvious signs of texting. And there, towards the end of the relationship, he'd also say things like, he couldn't post pictures of the two of us on his Facebook because, you know it would cause drama <laughs> and it's like how would it cause drama to post pictures of you and your girlfriend who you uh you know supposedly bought a house with <laughs> on your facebook unless there's other people who also think they might be in some sort of relationship with you or have the opportunity to be in a relationship with you <sighs> god i'm trying i don't want to get too far into the weeds here i don't want to talk too much about <laughs> you know all the the negative stuff there was a lot there was a lot but I just wanted to give you an idea of you know why I might be so you know emotionally <laughs> still 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 hurt by the whole thing a little bit of emotional trauma my trust was just d completely destroyed and devastated he lied he cheated he screwed me out of a lot of money I have no trust left I mean and this is a person who always told me that you know he was different because he was so honest and so trustworthy and he was a responsible adult and and these are all the things that he led me to believe before you know I and, and like I said I ignored red flags so it's my fault too but before I you know jumped into this thing and and I thought I thought it was it I thought this was the relationship I thought this was the person I was going to spend the rest of my life with because he had told me he knew what he wanted and this was what he wanted and that's why we were going to buy this house together and it was for real and forever and blah 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 and I fell for all that bullshit sorry <laughs> so so anyway so he did finally uh, like I said he did finally meet someone and he left me for them and, and I will say that relationship only lasted a year. <laughs> and she, she did eventually, uh, she actually left, like she was even uh, further, like I had moved several hours away from where I was to be with him. He convinced this woman who was like 12 hours away to move <laughs> 12 hours away from her friends and family for him. So, I mean, he, he can be a charmer, that's for sure. Uh, but like I said, she, after living together, I think they only lived together for like maybe six, eight months. She did, I, I'm, I'm reasonably certain she left him. Uh, it's, I guess it's possible he left her, but it, I'm reasonably certain she left him. Um, you know, after moving all this way for him. It's just, so not only was she younger, thinner, and arguably prettier, she was also smarter because she caught on to his BS really quick and didn't make excuses for him and put up with it. <laughs> So anyway, let me get into this makeup thing because I've totally forgotten to get into this makeup thing. Sorry guys, you know I can't do two things at once. <laughs> 
I'm gonna go clean up some fallout. I'll be right back. Okay, so yeah, so like after the relationship ended, I had a, a multiple women came to me and told me basically the same story about how they're, you know, especially there towards the end, but even earlier than that, he would not necessarily like, he wouldn't lie, but he'd also kind of downplay like kind of seeing someone or he wouldn't admit to seeing someone until I guess after he decided that wasn't a person he was that interested in. So then suddenly he'd be like, oh, well, I am kind of seeing someone. So he would, he would do it in ways that he wasn't necessarily lying when he was chatting up these women, but you know, he wasn't exactly honest either. <laughs> and he was telling them the same crap that he had been telling me before he and I started dating, you know, what a great boyfriend he was and how loyal and, you know, how he always got taken advantage of while, you know, meanwhile, I wasn't supporting him. Don't get me wrong. I was not supporting him, but I was definitely carrying him from month to month, which is how he was able to screw me over for a month and a half worth of rent and bills because, you know, he always paid late. <laughs> so when he left, <laughs> he, he owed, he owed a little bit back there that he obviously wasn't going to pay. Oh, another grievance and I had to pay for his, not his cell phone bill, mind you. Uh, we had purchased his cell phone on my credit, the physical phone, and we couldn't get that removed from my bill. So I had to pay for that for a full year after he left. had to be reminded of that, you know, every month, every month. <laughs> I would see that extra $10 charge for that phone on my bill for a year. So yeah, just the irony of him, you know, claiming how he gets taken advantage of while he screwed me over on all this stuff. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to switch gears for a minute. <laughs> Don't worry, it, it'll all come back together. It all ties in here in the end. But I am going to switch gears for a moment. So I'm sure it comes as no surprise to any of you that I am a fan of true crime. I love true crime. Uh, from way back in the... Uh, 80s when I read my first true crime book in Cold Blood by Truman Capote. I had been a fan of true crime. First it was I read all the books that I could get my hands on and then of course you know all the TV documentaries that I could see you know Cold Case Files and FBI I think Files and all the Discovery Channel true crime shows. So I'm a huge fan of true crime. And there was this one particular true crime case that I had actually seen the episode. It was a Discovery Channel episode. And uh, on the Discovery Channel, it, it's a, it's no longer, I, I actually saw it on YouTube a few years back. Uh, but it's no longer on YouTube, but you can still find it. It's uh, Discovery Channel. Uh, it's um, the, the title of the episode, I forgot which series it's from, but the title of the episode is Bourbon Street Bloodbath. And Bourbon Street Bloodbath is about these uh, goth kids who pick this guy up at a bar in New Orleans called The Dungeon. And if you've ever been to New Orleans and you're a goth, chances are you've been to The Dungeon. I go to The Dungeon uh, just about every time I'm in New Orleans. So, you know, this, this true crime case resonated with me because, you know, like I said, they pick up their, their victim at a place that I go every time I'm in New Orleans. And they're goth kids. That always fascinates me. And I'm not going to get too much into the crime, but like I said, it's these goth kids pick up this guy at the dungeon and go back to his hotel room with him. And in the end, the the gentleman ends up dead. And the goth, uh, the two goth kids that were most responsible out of the three that were there in the room fled the state, but eventually they were um, caught up with and, you know, sent to jail. So like I said, I had seen this true crime case and I'd actually told my uh, ex about it. I distinctly remember that because it was a period of time where I was unemployed. I was unemployed for about a year and that's when I, I made my scale mail tops for Dolls Kill during that time. And funny enough, like, I was unemployed for a year, but I still, you know, paid for most things. Like, when we went out, I was more likely to pay for stuff and because, you know, I had, I had money in savings. So, <laughs> I was still the more financially responsible one, even unemployed for a year. <sighs> See, I'm... <sighs> this is what happens. I fall into the bitterness. I get into the bitterness. I get off these topics. <sighs> but anyway, 
So I, I distinctly remember um, he'd come home from work and I'd spent all night, I was actually working on those scale mail tops for Doll's Kill. And I would work on them at the kitchen table while watching, you know, YouTube videos. This is well before I ever made a YouTube video, but you know, I'd, and I watched a lot of true crime back then. I, I watch a lot of true crime now. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I would spend a lot of my night watching true crime while making these scale mail tops. So anyway, when he got home from work, I distinctly remember telling him this entire story about these goth kids. And, and you know, like I said, it resonated with me because I love New Orleans. And every time I go to New Orleans, I hang out at this club. <laughs> so anyway, back to the tie-in. So I find out Okay, so the goth scene is small. The goth scene is worldwide, but the goth scene is also really small. If, if you are in a goth scene in the US, chances are there's only two or three degrees of separation between you and I. Like, we probably have multiple mutual friends on Facebook. We've po possibly even met the same people. We've probably both hugged Voltaire at some point. <laughs> you know, the goth scene, although it's vast, it's also small. And, and I have friends in New Orleans. So at some point I find out I am past the information. I am shown some proof. Out of all the women that my ex was chatting up, the one he eventually leaves me for was one of those goth kids from that true crime documentary. He left me for a murderer. So she'd only gotten five years because uh, she had, um, you know, turned state's witness against the boyfriend who had done the actual physical crime. So, so as far as I know, she she did, she wasn't like physically a murderer. But according to the story, uh, if you watch the documentary, you know, she was cheering her boyfriend on while he was committing this crime. <sighs> so. Yeah, <laughs> that's my twist. That's my twist. I was left for a murderer. <laughs> How crazy is that? <laughs>
karma. Maybe karma is a thing. And, and you know, I feel maybe a little bad thinking that, but hey, you know, like I said, <laughs> I don't believe he treated me well at all. I, I think that he was very unfair to me. <laughs> and I, I actually, I, I did, I did try. I did try to make amends at one point, and I told him, I told him all I wanted was just for him to just admit, just admit that he treated me poorly. <laughs> And he gave me the if excuse. And if you, if you guys, you guys know what I mean. There's nothing worse than the, the if apology. I'm sorry if I hurt you. I'm sorry if I treated you poorly. You know, that's him saying, I'm sorry that you feel this way, but I don't believe I did it. You know, it's like, there's no if about it. You did. You did treat me poorly. You, you know, you did screw me out of a shit ton of money. And to me, that's like, where, where's, where's the the integrity, you know, if, if I owed someone a lot of money like that, I would find, I would have found a way to, to make that right. But I guess, I guess he felt vin vindicated enough just by turning the much depreciated car over to me. <laughs> but there was still plenty of other money, even if we don't count that, that he screwed me over on. <sighs> Another little thing for me to bitch about, that last gothic cruise we went on, which I lent him the money for, and he of course never paid me back on. You know, we were both, I don't know if you know how cruises are, but you get this little sign and sail pass. And then you use that for everything that you purchase on the cruise ship. And of course it was hooked up to my credit card because, you know, he doesn't have a credit card. He just has a, a you know, a, a bank card. Um, <laughs> so he was tipping the very pretty, <laughs> Blonde, I think she was Russian waitress, $20 per drink. Now, mind you, tips are already included because we had had the drink pass and tips are already included. And then on top of the tips are already included, normally tip one or $2 extra. He was tipping her $20 per drink on my credit card. <laughs> and of course, you know, like I said, I never got paid back for any of that. <laughs> this is KVD Wizard. And the ever, like the, uh, what are these? The everlasting glimmer veils. And I swear this used to be black, but now it's like green. Do you, if you have this lipstick, let me know down in the comments below. Did yours turn green? Uh, so I, I guess, I guess we're done with the makeup and we're done with the story. I'm sure once I watch it back, I'll be like, I wish I hadn't talked about this, or I wish I had talked about this. And I'm really sorry if I spent too much of it, you know, <laughs> complaining about my ex. <laughs> oh, gosh, if, if you have ever like experienced any sort of emotional trauma, like I, I didn't think that you could get emotional trauma without actually being like very, I guess very specifically abused and and I don't feel that I was abused in any way. I mean, I was lied to and cheated on, but I just unfortunately I consider all that kind of can be kind of normal relationship stuff, so I don't consider that abuse. <laughs> but if you have any experience with this type of emotional trauma, do you have any suggestions on on how to heal from it? I mean, I'm doing better than I was. I am doing a lot better than I was. But I'm still not great because, like I said, I, I did try to finally go on my first date only like a month or so ago after like two and a half years. And I still, I still had a panic. <laughs> like, I still didn't, I, did, I still didn't react well. So I'm not 100% sure what to do other than just keep waiting. Time. I, I think time will eventually take care of it. I don't know what else to do, but please tell me down in the comments below if you have any suggestions. I'm going to use some. And let me know uh, down in the comments below what you thought of this story. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Just, like I said, I, I don't want to demonize him. He is, I truly believe he is not a bad person. I just feel that he got himself in over his head with too many promises. And he just, he just couldn't, you know, deliver and had his own panic attack, as it were, and just threw it all away. That's... And that could just be me making excuses again, but I, I I don't believe he's a bad person. I do I do think that he he is a he can be a good friend. Uh, he was a good friend to me before 
we had started dating. So I, I, I believe he's a good person. I just, things just went horribly wrong. <laughs> and unfortunately, I'm the one who, I guess, suffered the brunt of it. But again, I'm sorry for ramb rambling on about all this. I hope it wasn't, I hope I was I hope I didn't overshare. <laughs> Um, if you feel like, let me know if you feel like this, this is even inappropriate for me to share. Like I said, he, we're not friends. As far as I know, he's, he doesn't watch my videos. He's never going to see this. I guess if, if, if he does see this, um, thanks for the emotional trauma and the content, I guess. <laughs> but I don't think he ever will. <laughs> and I don't know, just, just tell me what you think below. Should, should I maybe... Was, was this was this video a bad idea? I, I, I'll be honest, I'm like, I was very nervous with sharing it, but I feel like, I feel like talking about it, saying these things out loud will help me heal, if that makes sense. And I just, I'm not sure if I should have done it so publicly, but again, like I said, no names. <laughs> But I don't, I don't know. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and, and putting up with <laughs> this incredibly long rambly video. I'm probably going to have to cut a lot out of it. I'm probably going to be like, oh, too much, too much oversharing. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, hopefully this isn't too terribly long. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Um, if you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy the video, feel free to give it a thumbs down and please Tell me all about it in the comments below. Constructive criticism is always welcome. <laughs> and please subscribe to the channel. <laughs> I can't guarantee there'll be any more juicy stories like this. I think this is probably, probably it for my juicy stories. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope everyone <laughs> is just having a wonderful day and is staying happy, healthy, and safe in this incredibly crazy world we're living in. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.